Shalom. I'd like to start this lesson by saying, Kal Halal Yahweh, Bah Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Bah Hashem, Rakal Kadash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and to the hopeful elect pushing this word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. This lesson is going to be titled Wise with Your Tongue because, you know, well, pretty much, you know, it's, it's, in, it's in the sentence, or sorry, the title. Like, if you're not wise with your words, wise with your speech, like, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble, right? Whether it's with your parents, with your woman, you know, with your boss at work, with your coworkers, with your clients, whatever, whoever you're talking to, if you're not wise with your words, you get yourself in trouble, a lot of trouble, right? We have to be skillful in everything, every single thing. So I'm going to go to, um, please, yeah. 20 and one I'm just gonna jump around oh faster way as a kid I was kind of I knew to do this but I wasn't really aware of it so I did get in trouble a lot Right, because you need to think about what you're going to say before you say it. Sometimes there's times where you don't even need to say anything. Just don't say anything. It's actually more wise than saying something. Right. Um, okay, so we're going to start off at 20. I'm going to jump around here. Ecclesiastes 20, verse 1. There is a reproof that is not calmly. Again, some man holdeth his tongue and he is wise. Right. So you want to go into the word calmly. Ooh. Descent suitable, proper to the time, place, circumstances, or persons. Um, fair, handsome. Right. So the right time. So there is a proof that is not calmly. Again, some man holds his tongue and he is wise. So there's times where you want to reprove someone, but it's not the right time to reprove them. So wise man hold his tongue for the right opportunity or the right time, right? It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. And he that confesses his fault shall be preserved from hurt, right? So if there's a time for you to reprove someone, right? I just go in the word of reprove. It's always good to look up words. Accuse, blame, um, disapprove, reject, condemn. Opposite of reversal of prison condition. Prove to be worthy. Um, and then you go to reprove. A shame or a disgrace. Also a censor, a rebuke. Reproach. Right? To blame, accuse. An act of expression of criticism and censure. Right, an act of expression of criticism. Right, that's the best way to understand that. It's much better to reprove than to be angered secretly. And he that confesses his faults shall be preserved from hurt. So, yeah, on top of it, like, right, you don't want to hold your anger. But we just read earlier in the scripture above is that there's times where you need to. Reprove someone at the right time. So that's the balance. Because you don't want to wait too long, right? But you don't want to be very hastily, haste at uh, reproving someone too at the same time. So there's the balance of knowing the right time and the right opportunity. And this is just being skillful with your tongue, your speech, your mind. So I'm going to go to... Verse 5, there is one that keepeth silence and is found wise, and another by much babbling become hateful. So people that don't really say anything, because like there's no reason to say anything, are found a lot wiser than people that just speak for the sake of speaking. You know, because no one's talking, so I'm going to start talking. And they say dumb stuff, right? They just look like a, a, a buffoon, Right? And people start to hate that person because they just find them annoying. You don't want to hang out with that person. Or if he's at work, your job, your boss, your boss starts to hate you. 
you know, he doesn't like you. You don't get a, you don't get benefits because you just are a buffoon, right? He doesn't take you seriously, or your woman, for example, she won't take you seriously because you're always just speaking out of like emotions. You know, you're not controlling your speech, not reproving at the right time, not saying something at the right time, right? And then holding your anger and then exploding and saying the wrong thing because you're you're emotional. Uh, verse 6 Some man holdeth his tongue Because he hath not to answer And some keep his silence Knowing his time Just like just said Right So like if you don't have anything to say Don't say anything Right It's that simple You don't need to say something Because the other person is uncomfortable Because no one's saying anything You know Verse 7 A wise man will hold his tongue Till he see opportunity but a babbler and a fool will regard no time. Yeah, I've just said that. He that useth many words shall be abhorred, and he that taketh to himself authority therein shall be hated. So it's funny, like, sometimes when you take control of yourself, because that's what the word authority means, like power, control, um, command, Right, people do sometimes you get another reaction where people actually don't like you because you're in very control of yourself because you're not speaking because um you know no one's talking right, so now there's like the other person feels uncomfortable because you're not saying anything, but you're just controlling yourself. that's all you're doing, you know you're not being a fool, babbling and saying things for the sake of saying, so sometimes people don't like you for that exact reason. Right. We're gonna go to thirteen. A wise man by his words maketh him beloved, but the graces of fools shall be poured out. Right. So a wise man can be loved by his words. But fools just blabber and blabber and babble, right? Verse 15, he giveth little and upbraideth much. He open he openeth his mouth like a crier, today he lendeth, and tomorrow will he ask it again, such as such an one is to be hated of Yahweh and man. So basically someone that gives little and you know criticizes a lot. It's always criticizing, but they give little. And when things go wrong, he's opening his mouth and crying, 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 you know. Till someone lends him something, and then tomorrow he does the same thing again. Right? Most I hate someone like that. Right? You should hate someone like that too. Just wanted to say that, just you never know. <clears throat> okay, this one. 18. To slip upon a pavement is better than to slip with the tongue. So the fall of the wicked shall come speedily. Shit. To slip upon a pavement is better than to slip with a tongue. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's very bad when you slip with a tongue. You cause a lot of hell in yourself. That's why you have to take command of yourself, right? Take authority of yourself and control yourself, right? Know the right opportunity to say something, to speak. Sometimes it's not the right opportunity. Even when other people are telling you to talk, you have to listen to yourself, right? It might not be the right time. If you feel it, you have to really be, um, what's we're looking for? No, it's not self-discipline. It's, um, I guess you, I would say you aware. You have to be really aware. That's not the word I want to use, but that's the word, um, it's coming to me. You have to be really aware of yourself and your emotions and your, and your, uh, flaws, Right, so you can take command of them. An unseasonable tale will always be in the mouth of the unwise. Yep, that's definitely true. Verse 20. A wise sentence shall be rejected when it cometh out of a fool's mouth, for he will not speak it in due season. Yep. He doesn't say it at the right time, even though it's wise, it's pure wisdom in that sense. Like the sentence is wisdom, but because he didn't say it at the right time, now he just looks like a fool, right? Because he doesn't know anything about timing. 
can jump to 27. A wise man shall promote like yeah. A wise man shall promote himself to honor with his words, and he that hath understanding will please great men. Yep. So at work, like if you're at work, you know, and you're just very good talker, you know, with your words, you know, you know, you can get promoted just off of that. You know, people like you. Right? Then you get close to the boss and whatever. You know, you start getting benefits and people, the other thing is people around you will hate you. <laughs> That's the other thing. Because you have control of your words and no one to say this, no one to say that, or no one not to say something, you know, just timing. Presence and gifts blind the eyes of the wise and stop up his mouth that he cannot reprove. So, for example, I can use work. Like, for example, if you have a problem with your, your boss, you know, like say you want a promotion and your boss knows this. You've been working here for so long, but he's keeping you in a certain low estate, right? They'll give you like bonuses. Oh, you got this $500 bonus or you got this, you know, little things, you know, gifts and presents will stop you from actually reproving this person for, you know, using working like a slave, not giving you a promotion, um, you know, things like that. Stop you from actually saying what you want to say, basically. Right. If that's one example or your woman, you know, your woman's doing things that you are aware of. Right. But and she knows it's wrong. But um, she keeps giving you gifts and stuff, you know, to play in your emotions, to distract you so you don't say what you need to say. To keep you in your emotions, basically. Right? And people know how to do this, especially women. So we're going to go to 37. Read from 8. Beware of a counselor and know before what need he hath, for he will counsel for himself lest he cast a lot upon thee. Yeah, so beware of someone who's giving you advice. You know, beware of everyone. You need to know what their needs are, what they want. Because if you don't, they'll just put you in a situation where they just benefit benefit from it and you just, and you fail. Right? Uh, verse 9, And say unto thee, And say unto thee, Thy way is good, and afterward he stand on the other side to see what shall befall thee. Yeah. Can't trust him. That's when you need to know what their intentions are. <clears throat> Verse 18. Four manner of things appear, good and evil, life and death, but the tongue rules over them continually. And it's true. Very true. We're going to go back 19. There's the last one. He that can rule, 19 and 6, he that can rule his tongue shall live without strife, and he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife, and he that hated Babylon shall have less evil. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife, and he that hated Babylon shall have less evil. Right? So, like, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I pretty much made the point. I don't want to go any further. Um, I hope this lesson was edifying. Like the close of by saying Ka Hala Yahwa, Bahashim, Yahu Shai, Bahashim, Raka Kadash, double honors to the apostle, great millstone, and to the hopeful elect pushing his word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth, death and destruction to his wicked kingdom, 
and at two-thirds as well, Kwame Yasharala, Abadabal, Shalom.